Israel. Desert, sand, religious sites. An almost unreal country. Modern, democratic and open-minded on the one hand side and deeply religious and ruled by the blazing, unforgiving heat on the other hand side. This very unique country welcomed me and my colleague in the late summer of 2016. There was no one planning the trip, writing a script, getting papers sorted well in advance. We wanted to capture footage for further episodes of the Drone Film School and visit this beautiful place again. That was the basic idea. We got in touch with some local drone pilots we knew from our last visit. Very fast we were offered a housing for the stay and the tickets were booked only days after. One bag with clothing, a tripod, a laptop, another bag for my main drones and accessories. We didn't bring a lot. Once arrived in Tel Aviv, we rented a car and after a while arrived at our host's house. We then started doing the main research. Luckily, we did not only have maps and guidebooks and the internet available, but a great Israeli drone pilots community on Facebook to talk to. They shared many locations, videos and ideas with us. And we already knew some others from our first trip to Israel. And filming in Israel was not as complicated as expected. People were either interested in the technology or they didn't pay attention to it at all. Even the police were as relaxed as could be. The few batteries and the enormous heat were giving us a hard time. We were prepared for the intense light and brought a huge and absolutely well working sun hood to avoid reflections on our screens. And it worked out perfectly. But at temperatures of around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the iPads gave up too often. So right now we're heading uh, to the Dead Sea, the lowest spot on Earth. Um, I think it's minus 400 meters and currently we're going all the way down um, from right now at about plus 500 meters. Um, I'm a little worried though. Um, that has nothing to do with the height, but it has something to do with the heat. Um, as we still have temperatures of around 37 degrees centigrade out there and my iPads are giving up and that caused us a lot of trouble over the last days. Uh, our iPads were lagging in quality. We even had to cancel two entire shootings. Oh, can feel the pressure now. And um, we had to cancel two entire shootings due to the heat only. And right now we just hope to uh, be able to capture some beautiful footage of the Dead Sea. And uh, let's just see what happens down there. Let's just hit the road. Talking about the Dead Sea, not only the heat caused us and our gear a lot of trouble, but there was too often something that kept us from recording aerials. On our way to the Dead Sea, for example, there was a car blocking the road for at least an hour as it was burning and exploding and sparks were blocking the second lane and we couldn't just drive by. But once we have passed it and started the drone, the iPads gave up and again we had to ground the gear. Once the sun began to sink behind the massive mountains, we were gifted with the whole beauty of the Dead Sea. We had to hurry, but were able to capture some very pretty shots. The formations of the salt were looking stunning. And finally, I was able to capture a great sunset right next to ancient Masada. Once my batteries were empty, the place turned out to be the quietest place I've ever seen or heard. Even though the camera was placed at least 50 feet away from me, it recorded crystal clear audio without any external mics or audio cleaning in post-production. It was amazing. I didn't even know that silence could be that powerful. We were recharging the batteries in the car to save as much time as possible. And we had to get gas daily as we felt like living in our tiny car during this day. Next in line was Jerusalem, the city of gold. I already expected that flying a drone in the old city was probably not allowed. That's why I raised my drone up outside the ancient city walls. I captured one shot, this one. But before I was able to really start filming, I was asked to land the drone and was told that filming in the entire city of Jerusalem was prohibited without a special permission. But I needed to film some areas of Jerusalem. I took the camera off the drone and put it on a stick, bought a ticket to walk on the city walls to raise some height just like my drone normally would. I that way created many shots that look very similar to real areas as they were shot with the same camera and as I tried to move the camera as drone-alike as possible.
Next, we drove down street 1 that leads from Jerusalem to Jericho. After a few minutes, we reached our next location, An Nabi Musa, which is supposed to be the tomb of Prophet Moses. It's a Muslim site of annual pilgrimage and a beautiful looking location. We asked the administrator's representative for a permission to film the site from above, but as his boss seemed to be in a bad mood, he warned us that it might not be possible. Once he discovered that we were from Germany, he changed his mind. He told us that due to the German history, very shameful from my perspective, we would get the permission if we would only pay him 200 shekels. He told us that he would like to raise his arm for the Hitler Gruß, the famous Nazi salute, and that he loves welcoming people from our country. Personally, I think that's disgusting and shameful. But once we started filming from a hill in the back, a group of teenagers, maybe 10 or 12 boys between 14 and 17, joined us. They seemed to be interested at first, but finally they crowded us, they tried to take our remote controllers away from us, they were yelling all the time and they started cursing at Jews, which were the only few words they were able to say in English. It was a tough situation and I emptied one battery after another just to get the job done and I was really rushing and was very glad to safely reach my car. We didn't even pack away our drones, just put them in the back seat. Another day, another location. Our host took us to St. George, an orthodox monastery in the Judean desert not far from Annabi Musa. It's not that far away from the, from the normal road actually. Yeah. No, I was thinking like so many people are so super We captured some beautiful shots but went out of power way too fast. And we did return in the evening but well it's Israel, just listen yourself. Okay, another busted sunset. We actually moved down to Wadi Kelt. Um, there is like a beautiful monastery down there, down these hills. And um, you can take a look around. The point is... We drove all around the country and met great people almost everywhere. We were able to film at historic sites. Many of them don't even appear in the film. And often we had to share our monitors with kids who were really excited about our drones. We had a busy but good time. At the end of our trip, we were invited to a small drone pilots meeting about 10 miles west of Jerusalem. We met great and enthusiastic pilots and Eyal, whom we've already met before, and he is one of the admins of my forum on Facebook. And it was a really nice get together at the end of our trip. <laughs> 